Okay, you were talking about the old school development side, the egg. Right. What's uh what's what's better than that? What's, what's so then the next generation of vaccines which arose in the fifties were what we call replication competent, where the virus you take it and it's actually reproducing in you. Yeah, that sounds safe. <laughs> and it, it can be somewhat problematic, yes, as you might imagine, because you're not once you put that virus in you, you have no more control, right? It's not like you have a kill switch in it, which yeah. actually would be a great idea to put in. Uh, like and like nano nanobots, what can possibly? No, you go could wrong? just put something in there. If you added a drug, you would you would oh, shut it off, right? And people are thinking about that because now we're engineering viruses to treat cancers and other diseases, and we, we may want to put kill switches in them just to make sure they don't run away. Oh, interesting. So you can like deploy a drug that binds to the this this virus that would shut it off in the body, something like that. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. that would be the idea. You'd have to engineer it in. Anyway, these were the first one was yellow fever vaccine that was made because that was a big problem. And you, this virus and the way you do this back in the old day was empirical. So Max Tyler, who did the yellow fever vaccine, he took the virus, which is a human virus, right? And he infected, I think he used chick embryos. Mm -hmm. And he went from one embryo to another and just kept passing. He did that hundreds of times. And he, every 10 passages, he would take the virus and put it in a, a mouse or a monkey, whatever his model was. And then eventually he got a virus that didn't cause any disease after 200 and some passages. And then that was tested in people and it became the yellow fever vaccine that we use today. It, oh, he wow. selected for mutations that made the virus not cause disease, but still make an immune response. Wow. So those are called replication competent. We now have the polio vaccine, which was developed in the 50s after the yellow fever. Then we had measles, mumps, rubella. Those are all replication competent vaccines. And you mentioned is that's that a good idea? They are all safe vaccines. The only one that has had an issue is the polio replication competent vaccine, which is called Sabin vaccine or oral polio virus vaccine, because you take it orally. It's it's a wonderful because you don't have to inject it. This mm -hmm. is the perfect delivery. You know, either intranasal for a respiratory virus or orally for polio. It goes into your intestines, it reproduces, and it gives you wonderful protection against polio. Mm -hmm. However, you do shed virus out, and that virus is no longer a vaccine. It's reverted genetically in your intestine. So you can infect others with polio. You could take that virus and yeah. put it into an animal and give it polio. And in fact, the parents of some kids in the 60s and 70s who were immunized got got polio from the vaccine. The rate was about one in one and a half million um, cases of polio. So it's called vaccine-associated polio. And I always argue that we may not have picked the right vaccine. There was a big fight in the U.S. and other countries between the inactivated polio and the, and the infectious polio vaccines, which ones we should be using because we found out that the infectious vaccine actually caused polio. And eight to 10 kids a year in the US alone got polio from the vaccine, which looking back is really not acceptable in my view, although the public health community said it was to get rid of polio. So now we are, we're close to eradicating polio globally, um, but this vaccine derived polio is a problem. So now we have to go back to the inactivated vaccine, which is tough because it's injected. 